All praise be to Allah and peace be upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A Bedouin man came to Medina, the city of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, invited by the call of Islam while he was in the desert. His pure nature and sincere heart led him to embrace Islam. As he wandered through the streets of Medina, he spotted the masjid of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and desired to pray two rak'ats before attending to his business. He entered the masjid and stood praying next to the Prophet peace be upon him and his companions. May Allah be pleased with them. After completing his prayer and preparing to leave, he felt the urge to relieve himself. Without realizing the sanctity of the masjid, he started to relieve himself inside. Such a disgraceful act was unacceptable, especially considering the violation of the masjid of the Prophet. Peace be upon him. What, what is this? In, in the, the masjid, masjid a man urinates? They should have scolded him and pushed him out of the masjid. masjid. This is exactly what the companions of the Prophet were about to do. They scolded him and they moved to discipline him. But a firm gesture from the Prophet, peace be upon him, stopped them. He, peace be upon him, said, don't scold him, leave him, and pour a bucket of water over his urine. What, what a, a wise, wise reaction, reaction of the, the Prophet, prophet peace, peace be upon, upon him. him. Of, of course, course this, this affected the Bedouin so deeply. You are right. This incident deeply affected the Bedouin guy, as he later described. When Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him approached him, he didn't curse, scold or strike him. Instead, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him asked, Aren't you a Muslim? The man replied, Yes. The Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him then asked, What made you urinate in the masjid? The man honestly replied and said, By the one who sent you with the truth, I thought it was just a sandy land and part of the desert, so I urinate there. The Prophet peace be upon him responded with mercy and compassion, saying, Indeed, these masjids are unsuitable for such impurities. They are only for the remembrance of Allah, prayer, and recitation of the Quran. This encounter profoundly affected the Bedouin guy, who later expressed the Prophet peace be upon him stood before him, the most beloved to me among my fathers and mothers, without cursing, scolding, or hitting me. What, what did the Bedouin, Bedouin man do, do after, after this incident? incident? He must have thanked the Prophet, peace be upon him, right? The man raised his hand to the sky and said an unusual supplication. O oh Allah, have mercy on me and Muhammad and don't have mercy on anyone else with us. Oh my God, this is unjust supplication. Close the door of the divine mercy creating anger among those present. Yes, that's what exactly happened. The companions got annoyed by his unjust, unusual dua. However, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, extended his patience and understanding towards the man's ignorance, knowing that just individuals act according to their nature and upbringing in harsh environment. He, peace be upon him, replied, You have restricted something vast. You have tightened the vast mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thus, the ethics of prophethood exemplify mercy, guidance, gentleness, and compassion, offering us the most excellent example in preaching and education, reflecting the wisdom of advice in both words and deeds. Allah the Almighty grants for gentleness what He doesn't give for harshness. This is the first lesson we learn from this great incident. Gentleness beautifies everything it touches, while harshness takes away from it. This is affirmed by the example of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, 
which was part of his perfection that united him with the hearts of those around him despite their diverse personalities and backgrounds as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْفَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكَ and by the mercy of Allah, you dealt with them gently. And had you been severe and harsh-hearted, they would have broken away from you. What, what are, are the, the other, other benefits? benefits? The other benefit that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, stopped the companions from confronting or mistreating the man, as doing so would have led to worse situation and various harms. Also, the man might have quickly moved, spreading the impurity and making it difficult to clean. Moreover, his clothing could have been filthy. And do you know withholding him from relieving himself could have harmed him physically? And this also could cause his private parts to be exposed. The worst consequence of all, he might have developed a negative perceptions of Muslims and Islam. Therefore, the wise reaction of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he commanded the companions to leave the man until he finished to avoid harm, following by cleaning the impurities by pouring water. But, but why did Prophet, Prophet Muhammad, Muhammad peace be upon him, ask the man, aren't you a Muslim? Despite seeing him praying in the masjid, the answer lies in the Prophet's intention to highlight the contradiction between man's actions and the behavior expected by Muslims, stressing the importance of respecting the sacred places and rituals. The crucial lesson here is, is in commanding the good and forbidding the evil, understanding people's natures and considering their psychological states. This leaves lasting impression and fosters the acceptance of the truth and guidance. The Bedouin man's violation in dua and the choosing of a place to relieving himself is stemmed of his ignorance of the Islamic teachings. Thus, the Prophet of Allah, peace be upon Upon him didn't criticize him harshly but instead corrected him gently. Therefore, the Prophet's treatment of the Bedouin differed of that of his close companions. Moreover, we learned that we have to respect the masjids as they are built for the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Forbidding evil should lead to its removal or reduction, not its escalation. Keeping masjids in good condition involves caring for them, worshipping Allah in them, attending Islamic gatherings, educating the ignorant gently and guiding the students of knowledge towards what benefits them. O oh Allah, forgive me, my parents and the believers when the day of judgment will be established. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.